What's going on, everybody? I'm Fearless, and I just got access to the Ableton Live 12 beta, and holy smokes, there is a ton of stuff in here that I didn't know about. So over the next couple months, I'm gonna be making videos breaking down every single feature, update, and change so that you can be confident in deciding if it's worth the upgrade or not. As you can see, there are a ton of release notes, and I've done the grunt work of sifting through it with a fine-tooth comb so that you guys don't have to. Today, we're going through all of the piano roll updates and i can confidently say that ableton live 12 has the best piano roll to date and if you stick with me through the entire video you're gonna see exactly what i mean so let's jump right into it what better way to start than with the piano roll itself so let's start to the top left as you can see not too much is changed right here in the clip view the only thing is that we now have this scale awareness which is pretty much a global scale but we'll go into detail on that in a later video let's jump back in as you can see with this first tab this is called the pitch and time utilities the second tab is called the transformation tools and the third tab is called the generative tools but starting with the first tab all of this is going to look very familiar to you all we did is they squished it down together so that it's taking up less room. And there's a couple different things. So for example, this stretch here is different. So if we go ahead and place a note in here, you can see we can actually stretch the length of the note using this completely. You have your multiply by two and divide by two for stretching the notes. If we make a basic chord right here and we go ahead and select this whole thing, it's gonna give us the range that our chords are in. And if we have our scale selected, we can actually use this to move different notes. So if we go up different semitones, it's gonna keep them all within our scale so we can't mess up. Also, if you have a note that might be out of bounds or just something sounds off to you, like let's say you accidentally place this note in here, if we highlight everything we say fit to scale, it's gonna grab that note and put it to a different one that's actually in our scale. They idiot proof this. We also have this invert button. This one was here before. It's just gonna invert where the notes are being placed. This is pretty cool. So you can actually add intervals based on how many semitones you want. So let's say we wanna add a different interval every Every three semitones let's boost this up to three and as you can see the notes that we already have are grayed out and if we go ahead and click off we're gonna see all of our notes now so that's really cool it doesn't interfere it's not gonna mess with us when we're creating different intervals and adding on to our notes I thought that was something amazing so if we go ahead and add another interval of those three semitones let's see what happens boom it's going to oh add God. that interval of three semitones and we can keep doing this over and over again or you can change it up completely maybe we only want to go to one semitone and add another interval but obviously we're going crazy right now this wouldn't be usable some other new stuff is that you can set the length of your midi notes so if you want to change the length of a group of midi notes you're going to select it obviously you're going to pick the length that you want to set it to or you can set it to the grid length which is pretty awesome and as you can see it set it right to that grid so if we go ahead and change it one half fourth of a bar we also have a humanize button which i don't believe we had before and if you look over in the corner it says it inserts random variation to the start of the time of the selected notes so you can pick how much humanization you want to occur and actually you can see as we change it it's starting to update in real time so this is a kind of a cool way to go ahead and drag different notes off the grid without having to do it manually check that out and if you go ahead and click the button it's just going to do it a bunch of different times for you otherwise you can just sit here and play with this until you're happy you also have the reverse and legato so we can reverse the notes or we can legato and that's going to go ahead and extend them all the way out and here's the write-up of all these features in case you need a little more detail i gotta take this switcher off because these new features are so freaking hot i'm sweating <gasps> Let's get into the transformation tools. Boom, clicking to this middle tab right here. We have arpeggiate, connect, ornament, quantize, recombine, span, strum, and time warp. We also have some max for live ones that they included as well for max MIDI transformation. You have to connect some stuff for this to work. Otherwise, we have a velocity shaper, which could be really cool especially for maybe like hi-hats and getting a certain grid or pattern down but ableton has classified these as transformation tools meaning that you can take midi that you have already created and transform it from there and if we look at this arpeggiator you pretty much get the arpeggiator midi plugin but right here in the side of our piano roll from the source, Arpeggiate splits up chords into smaller arpeggiated notes based on the chosen pattern settings. Connect fills empty gaps between successive notes or chords by adding connecting notes with specified density, length, rate, and pitch settings. Ornament, this one looks really cool, adds short strokes, flam, or grace notes at the beginning of existing notes, like some ghost notes. Quantize does exactly what you would think. Recombine rearranges the properties of a series of notes so that the pitch, length, or velocity settings of one note in the series are applied to a different note. Span adjusts the length 
length of the note end times using legato, tenuto, or staccato timing. Hopefully I said that right. Strum applies an offset to note start times for all successive notes in a chord, starting at either the highest or lowest note. This is so funny because I literally made a video before Ableton 12 came out about a Strum Max for Live plugin that was amazing, and I'm glad they added at least something. Time Warp does something exactly like you would think, stretches or compresses notes based on the speed curve as determined by two adjustable breakpoints. And if you want to see how each of these works individually, we're going to make detailed videos in the very new future going over at least the transformations and the generators because there's so much there that I would be here literally all day talking your ear off. Let's look at some of these generative tools now. We have Rhythm, Seed, Shape, Stacks, and we got some Max for Live Euclidean and Max MIDI Generator. Again, this is something that you'd have to attach. Attach. And the difference between these features that these are going to help you create MIDI, not just kind of manipulate what you already have. But pulling from the notes, Rhythm generates a rhythmic pattern of notes and velocity accents. Seed randomly generates notes using adjustable pitch, duration, and velocity ranges. Shape generates a sequence of notes with varying pitches based on drawn shapes or selected shape presets. And Stacks generates between one and four chords based on various chord rules that can be further tweaked and inverted. And they're saying that the transformations and the generators, they all have a button right at the bottom right here. You can see this one says generate. On the transformations, you can see it says transform, and this button can be clicked at any time to apply all of the rules or different variables that you expressed. And for the Max for Live tools that they included as well, the Velocity Shaper allows transforming note velocities using an envelope, and the Rhythm Euclidean generates a rhythmic pattern of notes. That one's really cool, by the way. We're gonna go into depth in the scale awareness in a different video, but this affects all of the tools we've been talking about and a lot of things in our piano role so that we can't make stupid mistakes, like putting notes out of bounds, for example. And as you can see, if we turn this off, some of these buttons on the top are then gonna disappear so let's turn it back on and as you can see the ones that disappeared are the scale so we can show just the notes in the scale man let's turn that off we can also fold which we've had for a while and that's just going to fold it to the notes that you have already drawn in and lastly we have this highlight scale which highlights the entire scale which i love that you can turn this off because it highlights just the notes here which makes it so much easier instead of having this crazy sometimes the colors are crazy if you're using crazy colors and i like myself some crazy colors and moving right along the top here we have our notes envelope and mpe Remember, this used to be on the side and it was kind of, I don't know, it just didn't seem like it fit right. So this feels way more at home. So with each one of these we click, we're gonna have different things appear on the bottom, different options, right? So check this out, it's all on the bottom. It makes it really nice. For instance, the envelopes. We can go ahead and pick any envelope that we wanna go ahead and do. As you can see, pitch bend, we can go ahead and make a pitch bend in our notes if we want to. And it's really that easily. And it's so easy just to go back to our notes and flip between them. I mean, it makes things just a breeze. Let's go back to notes though. On our notes, we have a couple different things. We obviously have our velocities, right? We've always had that. But if we go down here, you can see we also have chance. We could put them both on at the same time if we want. Let's go ahead and bring this up a little bit. Or we could turn one off. So let's actually turn off a velocity now. And as you can see right here, it says velocity, right? So it's going to give us these controls that we can change on our velocity. But if we go ahead and turn chance our velocity off, since chance is the only one on, you can see chance is going to show up there now. But if they're both on, it's going to take the top one. Actually, no, it just takes the one that was on first. Look at that. So we have a couple values here. And for chance, we're, we can randomize the chance. So you get a percentage. You have a randomized button. So let's go ahead and select everything. Let's click it a couple times. And you can see all of the chance right here being modulated and randomized for us automatically. And the last group of buttons you can see we have down here is the grouping. And this is... This is cool. There are a few different ways to group note probabilities together. Use the edit menu command group notes, play all. Use the shortcut control G or command G. Use the right click context menu open group notes, play all or group notes, play one in the MIDI note editor. Once the notes are grouped, there's gonna be a little marker in the top left corner. So for play all, all notes will be played or not depending on the chance amount. Play one, only one note in the group will be played at a time based on the chance amount. And obviously group notes can be ungrouped should you wish to do that later on by going ahead and pressing that command shift G or control shift G on Windows. And when our MIDI is grouped, if we go ahead and highlight over one note, it's going to highlight every single note. And that just gives us another indicator that this is in fact a group. So let's go back to velocity because velocity had a couple different ones. We have our value of randomization here, but we also have a ramp. And then we have deviation, which if we go ahead and pull this down, this is going to give us that random range. So every time it plays, it's going to give us a different range within the range that you specify the DV. 
deviation. But check this out. Let's say I made like a hi-hat pattern or something like this. If I want to go ahead and select maybe just this chunk right here, we can use the ramp to either ramp the velocities upwards or we can go down right here. So moving right along the top here, we also have our adaptive grid, which is now over here as well. All of the same values, but just in a new place for us to find. We can also right click and change it there as well. So overall, I think this ramp stuff is absolutely amazing. I'm so glad they added that. One thing that I'd like to see Ableton add in the future is some other lanes, right? So we have velocity, we have chance. I don't ever use chance. I can see where it would be good to use it, but I don't use chance. It would be cool for them to add panning, or it would be really cool if you could take any of the envelopes that are in here and you could use them in these different lanes. Maybe there's a way to link a lane to an envelope. Wouldn't that be dope? You can switch to narrow grid by pressing control or command and one, or you could switch to widen grid by pressing control or command and two. This one is crazy. They also added clip modulation and MIDI mapping support for the following warp modes, beats, tones, texture and complex pro so if we jump into an audio track right here otherwise guys you can use these down here now you just have to highlight it and you can click this on and off these little arrows right here will boost it we can also throw this on top if we want to now as well so this is kind of the added thing you can view your plugins while you're messing with this or a midi clip right and with the midi clip we just go ahead and click it and we have the same exact thing and a lot of this looks exactly the same this is a little bit different now we have our modes over here so i kind of like how this is set up but now if we want to go to texture for instance and we have this grain size and flux these are the things now that we can go ahead and modulate or automate all you got to do is go ahead and click on envelopes up here remember everything's going to be up there now and down here is where we can go ahead and click exactly what we want that to be so clip and then we have our grain size our flux our transportation and you would just go ahead and affect this however you'd like to do it so now you can do that right in the clip and it just dude it's going to give us so many crazy possibilities i can't wait to start messing with this and we have this whole quantize tab over here now as well which is definitely new so that'll be helpful if you need to quantize any of these samples here whether you do it on the grid or you go ahead and actually modulate it and guys there are tons of quality of life improvements that they've made, things that really aren't worth mentioning. So I'm gonna save your time here. One cool thing now, when cropping MIDI clips, notes that extend beyond the selected cropping range are going to automatically be trimmed to the new clips boundaries see that that's like a quality of life thing that is great to have but it's not really going to change how you make music you can still switch between your toggle views by pressing shift and tab it's going to allow us to go between them right there and we also have keyboard shortcuts if we want to open the views control alt three and control alt four or command option three and command option four three is going to open this view and four is going to open our audio view and then you can go ahead and tab between them if you hold down alt on windows or option on mac and you go ahead and click Click one of the views down here, it's going to open both of them. Let's look at some of the different MIDI editing shortcuts. All right, guys, if it doesn't work, you need to make sure that this is turned off. Okay, so let's turn this off. Otherwise, when we press E on our keyboard, it's going to think we're playing an E note. So now when we hold down E, we're going to get this little thing to pop up here. And if we go ahead and click, it's going to go ahead and chop this wherever we're at. Boom. So we can go ahead and chop this up really easy. Otherwise, if we go ahead and hold and drag it, it can go ahead and change it wherever we want. So we can line this up perfectly or if you want to go ahead and select a note here control or command depending on what you're on and e boom is going to split those notes based on our grid in fact let's press control or command z to go backwards let's pick a different grid maybe we'll do a bar and let's go ahead and stretch this out and let's go ahead and press that again control or command e and boom it's going to split it into that bar so if we go ahead and select this note let's hold down command and e and we'll just click right here boom and it's going to chop it oh we, we kind of fucked it up right there boom so obviously you got to be, you know, on with it. Also, we should be able to consolidate notes now. So if I select everything, we're going to press command option and J, otherwise control alt and J, and it's going to consolidate those notes based on where we have it highlighted. You see, we have this full bar here highlighted. So if we press command and Z, and that's going to be because we have our bar set right here. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to adaptive, press command and E to go ahead and split it up. And then we can press command option and J and go ahead and make it a consolidated note. Let's look at a couple other shortcuts that you guys are going to want to know. You can switch around to a lot of the different views, just holding down alt and then one of the numbers. Otherwise, you can replace that with option if you're on a Mac. Option one, two, three four, five. Yeah, there we go. It's changing between all of these. So very, very cool. You can freeze tracks now using controller command alt or option shift and F. There's also a new sub menu called clip markers, and it allows you to set different clip marker and start times and different things using these right here. This is cool. You can adjust the note velocities by holding down alt and then up and down on the arrow keys, which is going to be, oh, they're saying it's command on Mac, not option. All right, so let's go ahead and highlight everything. We're now going to hold down command like they told us. We're going to press up and down on our keyboard. And there you go. What does option do? 
Option does nothing. It goes in between the individual notes. I'm trying to confuse us. Clicking down the scroll wheel now allows us to pan through our view. So if we click down on our mouse wheel, oh my gosh, that is so lovely. And it allows us to do that everywhere. Check this out. Everywhere, bro. Check this out, brother. So that's going to conclude the updates for Ableton 12's piano roll. But guys, this is just a fraction of what's changed in Ableton 12. You're going to want to check out this video next so you can see the other amazing features.